Hello everybody, I'm Roadblock, and this is a Raid Shadow Legends video. We are back on the Ninja Block account. Um, I'm kind of re-recording an episode that I recorded and didn't release, uh, but I recorded that on stream, and I was just kind of all over the place and didn't really like the way that it, the, the final product ended up and chose not to release it. But mostly, I'm going to re-talk about everything that was talked about in that episode anyways, but I kind of wanted to give a little bit of backstory if you're like, you know wondering if you watched it live and wondering where that video was or any of those things um or wondering why a video didn't come out yesterday but let's talk about thor so i think thor is very good i think my account is in a good enough position to go after thor except for the fact that things are not very intuitive for the ninja account so what do i mean by that well if we take a look at the fusion breakdown, uh, we're starting off with a champion chase. Now, it's pretty normal that a champion chase will coincide with a 2x event, right? If you are new to raid and haven't kind of figured this out yet, 2x events are usually, with exceptions, every other weekend you'll have a 2x event. And they go in the order of sacreds, voids ancients sacred voids ancients things have been thrown in now with primal shards that change it up we had a random void one in the middle of the week right so there's a lot of things that have changed and manipulated the way that this stuff usually works but summon rushes usually go with like a progressive chance or something like that and champion chases usually go with a 2x. Now, I say usually because this is Raid Shadow Legends. They can change this up at any time. They can do, like we, like we just talked about, random void events in the middle of the, in the, middle of the week. With that's a 2x. You know, they, there's, they've done crazy stuff. Also, during holidays and big events like that, they'll do, like, a back-to-back -back sacred, you know, sacred ancient void or whatever. But... In the terms of this fusion, we're starting with the champion chase. Now, this puts free-to-play accounts at a slight disadvantage. Because champion chase tournaments, you generate points based not on the type of shard that you pull, but on the type of champion that you receive. Now, this is usually in your favor during void and ancient shard pulls, because your chances to get epics are higher. And that's kind of where the points are, because you can generate a lot of epics. The downside to it occurring in a sacred shard week is that you're guaranteed to get an epic. And it, with that guarantee also comes less points, um, which kind of sounds weird but i guess sacreds are, are if you a good way to look at it is sacreds are so much more valuable to your account um to use it only to get 250 points in uh a champion chase feels less grat like satisfying it feels like it's you know holding you back right um but when you get really good epic rates in an ancient shard pull and you manage to get good points for your sub for your champion chase well, that's really good, right? You feel good about that. So anyways, um, that's just my opinion and kind of how I feel on it. So I'm guaranteed, because I have five sacreds ready to pull on the account, I'm guaranteed to get, what's that, 1,250? Now that is just shy of what I need to get the epic fragments, but there's a twist here. Um, well, before I get into that, let's also talk about why it's better in these types of events to have the, so, the, the champion chase at the end. Because champion chase points are based on the type of champion that you get, that means all these epics right here, let me minimize this real quick, all these epics right here, that means you can get though, you can fuse those and get points in champion chase. So it's a little frustrating because as a free-to-play player, I could have saved all my sacreds until the champion chase. Oh, no, I could have used my sacreds in a summon rush where I would have gotten 500 points per each of them 
and then go to the champion chase and do stuff if if it was at the end fusing at least three of these preferably and then perhaps doing some other ways of getting points right because there are other fusions that exist in the game so maybe doing some broadmaw fusions or even some Razin fusions if you happen to have the right rares for it you could fuse relic keeper as many times as you want collecting a bunch of these farmable rares and fusing justice ears right um maybe you happen to have the the makings to fuse some of the epics for mikage even right so you can manipulate that you don't have to pull shards to get the points for that specific thing and then of course you have whatever's left over so i personally like to use my sacred shards during a summon rush and whatever the targeted shard is during the 2x event of a champion chase but because they're doing the champion chase at the beginning it has thrown off my plans a little bit um and i feel like it has made this particular um event not impossible i'm gonna say impossible I'm going to say impossible for me to generate enough points summoning right now means that I need to have sacred shards for the summon rush at the end. And I'm just not going to have them, but there's a bit of a twist here. So we have this third summon, well, not sorry, this second summon rush or third summoning event in this whole thing. So basically what I'm getting at, you could potentially just ignore the champion chase and ignore this summon rush and just do this one. It's worth 50 points. These are each worth 25. Now, I have a theory about this. I have zero way of knowing. I have absolutely no way of knowing. But it would be interesting if this aligned with a Freya deck of fates, which we know is coming. Um, it's highly unlikely. I've heard people say that they don't think it's going to happen. I've heard people say they do think it's going to happen. On my main account, I am going to save all my sacreds. I am going all in on this summon rush on my main account. Mostly because if I, what I'm afraid of is that they may jack up the points on the summon rush. If they jack up the points on the summon rush and I don't have enough on my free to play or the ninja account if i went that route which i'm not going to go that route spoiler alert but on the free to play if i don't have enough shards for this bonus summon rush at the end i'm just screwed because it's it's not a oh i don't like to spend money on the game it's a hard i won't spend money on the game because it's a challenge and I'm doing it for YouTube content, right? So it's not like I can, you know, oh, well, I'm only one shard away. Okay, credit card, cha-ching, right? I can't do that on my free-to-play. So I always have to be mindful of that. Um, now, for for most of you that are playing free-to-play, you don't, maybe, maybe you don't have the money or you don't think this is worth the money to spend on it, um, which could be the same reasoning behind it. So if you were locked in to not spending money, this is a big risk, in my opinion, because you could get all the way to the end of this event, do every single thing except the summoning things, and not have the resources to complete this summon rush, which would be uh, unfortunate, because then you've wasted... Not, I don't think you really wasted that, given High Mother Mod and things like that, but still, it could be a bit of a waste. So... um. On the ninja account, I am going to pull all of my sacreds today. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit. So why on the ninja account am I willing to, buy, to, to spend all my shards right now? It's a 2x event. This is the best chance I have to get legendaries for the ninja account. It is better for me to pull during a 2x here. Mm, okay, I don't want to say it's better for me. It's not better for me. It's safer for me to pull during a 2x here than it is to pull during a summon rush at the end of it and not have enough shards to complete said summon rush and therefore not get Thor and then end up also either saving my sacreds at that point or pulling them for less points and less chances of getting a legendary, right? 
So the the big thing for me is that if the, if the champion chase was at the end, I would go for this. I'd pull my sacreds today dur- or this weekend during a summon rush, get the points for that, and then hope that I can generate enough resources and fuse the epics at the end to get reasonable points in a champion chase. But that's just not the world that we live in. So on the ninja account, I am not going for the fusion, but I do think my account could do it. I really do. And just to kind of support that a little bit, I've been running spider all day today passive energy gain we talk about that a lot you can see how close i am already to the points i need for the fragments now dungeon divers is where they get you and i'm quite a ways away from dungeon divers you may be asking why are you doing this aren't like if you're not going for the fusion ah it's a tournament right i'm getting extra resources from doing that dungeon i'm going to do dungeons during tournaments right if i'm if i'm spending my passive energy while i'm you know using multi battles or or whatever i would rather use it on a place that gets me extra resources from a tournament and such so um you know it's just that's just what it is right just trying to double dip but this dungeon divers is going to be really really hard you're talking like probably four thousand energy right here and i'm not getting good rates because i'm doing dungeons far lower than level 20 so uh it would be very very difficult for me to pull off that that dungeon divers anyways let alone talking about all the shard pulling and everything within the event um my big thing is just the fear of the unknown do I think I could do? Because, by the way, I said, like, all these different ways to generate points. I don't currently have any of those ways to generate points, right? I can fuse one Relic Keeper right now, but I'd have to level all of these to four-star and level 40 to do so. Um, and then I can't do any of these fusions. I can't do Broadmaw. I can't do any of these fusions. Like, I don't really have what I would need. Now, perhaps... If I was to grind out champion training, dungeon divers, artifact enhancement. Well, actually, let me look at the calendar. It'll be easier to calculate this. So I could perhaps do, with Sunday being the cutoff, if I do all of dragon on Sunday, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So, uh, yeah, because this is on Monday. So really, I could only get one of the fusions on Sunday before it expires. So one of these, one of the Diana gloom piercers, which then even that's not that doable. Um, and by the way, I'm counting, well, w- let's ignore this, the champion chase ones, and then just, you know, say one of these instead, it's still just one that I can complete. So um, I don't think that's going to be enough points even if i pulled all my ancients and maybe got lucky on some it's just it's harder to do and it's riskier so we're just going to take the easier route we're going to take the safer play and skip thor as good as he is and as badly as i want him on the ninja account we're going to go ahead and skip him the benefit for you guys that you get to see me pull some shards because we are going to pull my five sacreds we're going to pull them right now i am live streaming right now as well um we are going to pull those five sacreds and hope that we might get something good from them, right? But I'm always going to pull during two X's if I can on my free-to-plays. Um, and my main free-to-play account will be discussed in another video uh, where I will also be pulling shards on that main free-to-play. And I'm going to talk about my mindset, why I'm not waiting until the um, the summon rush on that account, but I am on the main account. I've kind of touched on that a little bit, but there's a little more to it. Anyways... The last thing I wanted to do was talk about the new chick before I go ahead and pull these shards. And I'm sorry to make you guys wait to see that, but honestly, I don't have as many people in my chat right now. And I don't want to deprive. People always come in late and they're like, oh no, I didn't get to see the shard pull. So um, I'm going to try and stretch this out a little bit further. I am sorry, but to be fair, I did talk about her in that other episode and I want to talk about her now. So. On the A1, we have a decreased defense on the A1. That's a two times hitter with a 25% chance, booked up to 30. On the A2, we have a three turn cooldown when booked, where she teams up with two random allies to attack a single enemy, and they use their default skills, typical ally attack ability. If they're under decreased defense, though, all three of these attacks will ignore 20% of the target's defense. That's actually 
very unique and very good. Um, then we have the A3, which is also on a three-turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies, but before attacking, she places increased crit rate and crit damage on herself for two turns. If the attack kills an enemy, places a veil on all allies for one turn. And then lastly, this champion will ignore shield and strengthen buffs when attacking under an increased attack veil or perfect veil. I like this kit, and I think this is going to be a very interesting champion. Um, I don't necessarily think that she's going to be really good for, like, clan boss, which is my main focus right now. But she could be a pretty decent epic nuker, maybe for arena or even wave content, something of the sort. So... I like her. I like her kit. I'm definitely going to fuse one of these. Um, which events I do is to be determined. Obviously, I've already got 25 of her fragments, so I only need to do three more events. Probably the the, the dungeon tournaments, because I'm going to want to, like I, say, I, like I said, I like to double dip. So I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on that, but let's go ahead and get into the fun part. Let's go ahead and pull my sacred shards. Now... You may not agree with my reasoning behind all of this, but um, it's my reasoning <laughs> and, I, you know, it's what I decided to do and how I wanted to approach the account. So we have five sacreds here. We've got enough room. We are going to go ahead and pull these and let's see what we get. Um, I don't have any mercy. These are the first sacred shards that I'm pulling on the account. Without any further ado, here we go. Um, okay, Cormac, I'm not that familiar. Decrease speed on the A1, single target decrease defense, increase accuracy and crit rate. Don't know that that really helps me out too much. Another epic, yeah, I already know Burgoth. I'm not, I'm not a fan of Burgoth. So that is part of the Raz infusion fusion so getting lich isn't terrible i don't like the kit especially but um it does get me closer to razin if i want to fuse razin which i kind of don't want to do uh just a little kind of like in what we were talking about if you don't fuse razin then you can fuse these epics more often right all right Two more to go. I'd really like to get something better. There we go. What did we get? <gasps> I thought that was new for a second, but Herndig is awesome, and I'm super excited about getting Herndig. Uh, I did think it was new for a split second, and I was just like, you guys are going to destroy me in the comments. So, hey, we got a legendary. I am so excited about this. But uh, So, I got Herndig on the main free-to-play and never built him. This one will probably get built. Um, again, another magic champion, though. Dude, come on. Okay. Let's talk about the kit. Attacks one enemy, grants an extra turn, and decreases the cooldown of Stasis Strike. This is Stasis Strike. Um, then we have Attacks All Enemies has a 75% chance of... The, so, 100% chance when booked of decreased defense and decreased accuracy on an AoE. So, now we have a better decreased defense champion than Tyrell, a better AoE decreased defense champion, which I like quite a bit. Then here we have a four turn cooldown when booked, attacks one enemy, fully depletes the target's turn meter. This is going to be really good for uh, Fire Knight and Spider. Um, then we'll also attack all enemies when ascended. If the first attack is critical, this AoE attack has 75% of placing weakened for two turns, 100% when booked. We'll also place HP burn debuff for two turns after the attack on enemies whose turn meters are below 30%. So that's like a conditional HP burn that I'm not a big fan of, but still, we're also getting weak in here, right? So we're going to get AoE decreased defense and AoE weaken when ascended, and then fills this champion's turn meter by 10% every time they are hit, occurs once per hit, also fills this champion's turn meter by 20% whenever an ally dies. I think Herndig's going to be really good for our account. Um, again, I'm very magic heavy between Herndig and Hefrak, 
I'm also very heavy in the H's, apparently. Um, but we still have one more shard to pull, so let's go ahead and pull this. Let's see a good epic here. Mordecai! Yes! Okay. Mordecai is awesome and a big pull on this account. This is really going to help me with Spider. So, and Hydra and so many other parts of the game. What I love about Mordecai, um, he has 100% chance of placing an, H placing an HP burn. So, no hit affiliated with this. Doesn't matter if they're under Poison Cloud for Hydra or anything like that. It, and then what's going to be really good is this is really good on, on Spider as well. Then we have uh, full AoE uh, decreasing turn meter. Also turn meter fill for the allies. And we even have uh, turn meter decreasing turn meter by 10%. Um, it has an increased percent chance if they're under a burn, right? So it becomes a, what, 65, 75% chance to do a 10% turn meter A1 um on uh, spider or anyone else that's under a burn yeah i think this is a, again really really good for me aoe burn uh is something that i need it can i don't i don't know that i'm gonna say it pairs very well or anything of the sort with ninja per se but um having that consistent burn is gonna be really really handy um, and so then we get all the energy and the extra resources here. Okay, I don't know what I clicked, but I don't know why it took me back to that. That was a weird interaction. But really solid pulls. That's what it was, was the go button. Okay, really, really good pulls. Now, we're at 1511, and I could get these fragments. I, I can just pull... 40 more mystery shards to get these fragments so it's fine um again i'm not going to go for all of the fragments i do not have the shards now to complete a summon rush at the end of the event and i have no way of getting more sacred shards other than campaign and that didn't go very well spoiler alert um i made it to on nightmare made it to about here um i don't have the gear to get further as of yet, but Herndig may be a very viable option there to get me a little bit further as he gets built up. Um, so, yeah, good pulls. Really good pulls. That's that's really good. Getting a legendary is a big deal there. If I didn't get a legendary and I didn't get any decent epics, that definitely could have uh, felt very painful rather than trying to go for Thor, right? But overall, I am happy... I finally get to build this Herndig. I don't think there's anybody I'm going to wait to see. Uh, I think Herndig gets built this time. Uh, it's not like I'm going to pull Newt or any of the crazy good legendaries I pulled on the other free-to-play. So uh, we're definitely going to get get Newt built. Uh, or Sorry, we're going to get Herndig built. But really, really good pulls. So anyways, I'm going to end the video here a little bit longer than I would have wanted it. I do apologize for that. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support that you give me. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed my content, please consider subscribing. Uh, I'm going to keep the, uh, the outro short and just end it here. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.